Good evening, friends. The subject of my talk this evening is who is the divine mother. I repeat, who is the divine mother? In many religions, God is looked upon as father, and in some religions, such as Hinduism, God is looked upon as mother also. That's why the expression "divine mother" came. I am giving this talk at the request of one of our members. And the highest concept of God that is there in Hinduism is the concept of Brahman. Brahman means larger than the largest, greater than the greatest. <laughs> that is the meaning of the word Brahman. And and this Brahman is beyond all limitations. It is eternity. Infinity, and the only source of consciousness. That's how people want to talk about Brahman. But at the same time, it is said that Brahman can never be talked about beyond mind and speech. But still, people like to talk about Brahman. So, Brahman. Larger than the largest, beyond time, space, and causation. And the man is also called Satchidanandam in Sanskrit. Sat means existence, Chit means consciousness. And ananda means something which cannot be exactly translated into English, but they have translated it as bliss. Because this world of time, space, and causation is a world of pairs of opposites. If we know light, we know darkness also, and vice versa. Everything comes as a pair. So, anandam, the ordinary meaning of the word anandam is joy. So joy must have its opposite in the word sorrow. But Brahman is not like that. Beyond the pairs of opposites, so. The best word which could mean Brahman is the sense peace. In Sanskrit, it is called Shanti, peace. What is peace? Well, let us consider a person who is suffering from headache, a severe headache, and <laughs> then he takes. A painkiller. After half an hour, his headache is gone. Now he is in a state of relief from pain. Only from pain, no, from pleasure also. Because when he had headache, he was suffering. And now that suffering is gone. But is he enjoying now? No, he is neither suffering nor enjoying. It is a state of relief from both. Peace is something like that. It doesn't belong to any pair of opposites. So that is the concept of divinity. Then one may wonder why. The idea of 
divinity as mother is there in Hinduism. Okay. In Hinduism, there are six systems of religious philosophy. And the oldest among them is the Sankhya school. That school says at the beginning, there was Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha means the male principle, so to say, <laughs> if I translate it correctly. And then Prakriti means Mother Nature. And Purusha is consciousness itself. And Prakriti is primordial matter. Very fine matter. We cannot even conceive of that fineness. It is matter. And that primordial nature, Prakriti, is composed of three things that are called qualities or gunas, that is Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. When this, I'll talk about that a little later. That's why Prakriti is, has got three gunas. But Purusha is beyond those three gunas. And Prakriti has become this universe consisting of all of us. That's why Prakriti is like the mother. And the word Prakriti also is, has a feminine gender, and mother nature, we would say. From there, the idea of God as mother might have come. Anyway, and Prakriti borrows consciousness from Purusha and becomes conscious, and as soon as it becomes conscious, it starts evolving. First, it evolves as the cosmic mind. And when the mind is there, then the cosmic ego appears there, then cos the cosmic ego. And then from that cosmic ego come five sense organs, you know, which, which they are. <laughs> That is the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the tongue, and the skin. These are sense organs, five sense organs. And then five motor organs also, Prakriti becomes. Motor organs is the organ of speech. The organ with, with the help of which we grab things, that means our hands. And the organ which helps us to move around, that is our feet. And the organ with the help of which we, the food that we have, our body has digested goes out. That means the anus. And then the other organ is the organ of reproduction. These are called five motor organs. So Prakriti becomes all of these things. And then also, very five subtle. Very fine particles. Those what they are cannot be described. That's why the word Tanmatra is used. That alone, that is the translation. One can say that alone is there. What it is, it is difficult to say. It is so fine. And from those tanmatras, they evolved into five things. This earth element, 
water element, fire element, air element, and the sky element that is also considered an element. Sky. Shiti of Tejas Marutan Bhuma. So, Prakriti is the mother of all these things because from her all these things have come. That's how most probably the concept came that God can be mother also. <laughs> then again, in other schools, they talk about God. He is the creator. He has created this world. And the creative power, God, Ishara is called. And God has creative power. And creative power in Sanskrit is called Srijani Shakti. And Shakti has feminine gender. That's why this idea of Divine Mother came. creative aspect of God is called the Divine Mother. So, the other day somebody was talking about the Divine Mother Kali. Divine Mother Kali. Why that name is given? Yes. Brahman is eternity. That is endless time. And then from that the word Kali has been produced. He is eternally present. And those who talk about the Divine Mother Kali and other deities as they are called, I should tell them that it is that Satchit Anandam Brahman, that means impersonal divinity, does not have any gender or anything. But when with our finite minds we try to conceive of that impersonal divinity, then our finite minds go on projecting limitations which are there in, in these minds. You see, like a sky, its color is grayish. It's a very thin layer of cloud is there and then some people are looking at the same sky using some colored eyeglasses. One who has a red colored eye, one has a pair of red colored eyeglasses when he looks at that gray sky through that lens then the sky will become reddish. Another person has green colored eyeglasses. To him, this gray sky will appear to be greenish. That's how the same sky is not changing its color. These colors are being projected on that sky. So also human minds, there are limitations. When they try to think of that infinity, which is divinity, then they project some limitations on that. And then that infinite Brahman becomes a father, a mother. <laughs> These are all projected by human minds. And also a child or a friend. And all these ideas are accommodated in Hinduism. One can look upon God as father, one can look upon God as a friend, one can look upon God as mother, one can look upon God as a child also. In Christianity, God is looked upon as father. Hmm. 
but God is neither father nor mother or anything. And these are all projections of human minds. So, the lady asked me about Mother Kali. Mother Kali is no other than Brahman appearing as, as a mother. And her complexion is extremely dark. And, and she has many arms. Some arms contain some weapons to kill. <laughs> Those forms are only symbols to indicate who, what the Divine Mother Kali is. So, In one arm she is destroying, in another arm she is saving. Because if we look at the world, we will see that creation, preservation and destruction, they are going hand in hand. So, those arms contain some weapons showing that she is killing. Then again another arm is there to say, no, she is saving those who are being tormented. And there is another arm where the hand is giving boons to people. So all these same signs and symbols are there. That's why if you see the image of some female deity or male deity <laughs> in Hinduism, then those, sim those images are only symbols. They know, the Hindus know that the image is not as God really is, symbolized. In Christianity, the cross is considered very holy. But it was a symbol of torture. Criminals should be crucified in ancient Israel. And Jesus was crucified also. Of course, those people there didn't understand that Jesus didn't die on the cross, he had entered into a state of high spiritual state called Nirvikalpa Samadhi. At that time, the body appears to be dead. But again, that person who has had this Samadhi can come back to the awareness of the world. That's what happens to Jesus actually. Jesus was, his body was taken and put in a grotto, and after a while, Jesus came out of the grotto and took the disguise of a gardener. Mm -hmm. That's what we read. Two Marys, who they are the same name, Mary, Mary Magdalene and all. And they came to anoint the body of Jesus according to the tradition of that time. So they came, but his body was not there in the grotto. They were wondering what had happened. Then suddenly a gardener, a person dressed like a gardener, came and stood before them. And then the gardener started speaking. When the gardener spoke, they understood that the gardener was Jesus. He took the disguise of a gardener, otherwise he would be again arrested and <laughs> crucified. Jesus was not lacking in intelligence. And what did Jesus say to those two ladies? He said, go to my brothers, that is the, those who are considered as apostles and so on. Jesus would not look upon them as his disciples because 
as a divine incarnation, he did not have the idea of a teacher. God was the teacher. That's why he called friends. Go and go there and tell my friends that I shall meet them in Galilee. That's what Jesus said. So, and that since then, since Jesus was crucified, after a while, people developed great respect for Jesus. That's why the cross became a symbol of Christianity, the teachings of Jesus, so to say. It is a holy symbol now. At one time, it was unholy because it was used to kill people, criminals. They would be nailed to the cross. The cross was vertically put on the ground and then the hands and feet and the navel and all these, these are all nailed to that cross. And so that person who lived in the cross who slowly died suffering excruciating pain. So it was a, it should have been the symbol of torture, but no, it has become a symbol of holiness because it is associated with Jesus Christ. It symbolizes Jesus. So also, these images which are of deities, such as the image of the Divine Mother Kali, these are only symbols trying to tell us what the Divine Mother Kali is like. Usually Divine Mother Kali is worshipped in India by many and she is no other than divinity. And Sri Ramakrishna, a divine incarnation, he said about the Divine Mother Kali, Mother Kali is dark, only seen from a distance. When you come closer, she is colorless. Then as you come to know that she is divinity itself, then you go beyond the symbols. So, the Divine Mother Kali and Brahman, there is no difference between the two. Some people used to come to see Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Ramakrishna used to usually worship at the temple of the Divine Mother Kali. But he knew the Divine Mother Kali to be divinity and its form of the Divine Mother Kali was just some symbols and I should mention here one thing that is in India certain deities are worshipped using images and after the worship the image is taken out and thrown into water that is it is no longer needed that is the idea that is the implication. So, Sri Ramakrishna worshipped the Divine Mother Kali, but he knew her to be no other than divinity. And some people who believed in only that impersonal divinity, and they belonged to a reformist group of Hinduism called Brahma Samaj. They used to believe in Brahman only and no other deities or anything. And one or two leaders of that group came to see Sri Ramakrishna and they would not believe in worship of God using images. Sri Ramakrishna made them understand very clearly 
that these images are not God and there is only one God. There is saying in our scriptures, Sat Chit Ekam Brahma, Brahman alone is ex existence and consciousness. But all these symbols are used of deities. So the Shyam Krishna would tell them that the Mother Kali and Brahman they are one and the same. He told Vijay Krishna Goswami that he was a Brahman leader and also Keshav Chandra Sen, the renowned Brahman leader. They believed in only Brahman. And he said, this Mother Kali is no other than Brahman. In fact, he repeated in his own way some utterance that we have in Rig Veda, that ancient scripture. Ekam sat vipra bhuda vadanti. There is only one reality, one truth. And the sages call the same truth by different names. They gave different names of deities and all. But the divinity, the truth, there is one. So, the Divine Mother and the Divine Father, <laughs> they are one and the same, <laughs> same Brahman divinity. Once a girl, and I had just come to this country, came to see me, young girl, and she asked me, how should I look upon God? She was obviously from a Christian background, and I said, Look upon God as Father. Then she said, I cannot do that. Why not? So my father was mean to me. <laughs> then I said, can you look upon God as Mother then? then? She said, no, I can't do that either. Because my mother was also mean to me. <laughs> it was a strange experience for me. Because I came from a country where father and mother both are treated as divinities <laughs> in human form. But anyway, then I said, can you look upon God as a friend? I said, all right, I shall give it a try, she said. And she went away. I never saw her again. So, <laughs> who is the Divine Mother? The Divine Mother is the Divine Father. <laughs> And, and also the Divine Father and also, truly speaking, they are all the same impersonal divinity manifested in different forms. That's what I know. So, who is the Divine Mother? The Divine Mother, in the ultimate sense, is no other than Brahman. And Divine Mother Kali, the Divine Mother Durga, <laughs> they are all one and the same divinity. Well, this is a holy occasion. I have talked about divinity. So let me pray to God. God, please give us peace. Peace is required. Peace is beyond suffering and enjoyment. Yes. Thank you all.